Welcome, webheads! It's that time again for the most supersonic, hypersonic, and harmonic cybersecurity webcast on the internet. So welcome to Head in the Clouds! So take it away, Jules and Jay. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us for episode three of Head in the Clouds. My name is Julie Haste, and I'm a vendor business manager here at Cloud Harmonics. And I'm Jason Weber. I am the Solutions Research and Development Manager here at Cloud Harmonics. And I want to thank you all for joining us today. Our guests today are our resident experts, Steve Turner and Chris Gardner, our senior solution architects here at Cloud Harmonics, bringing over 35 years of experience in networking and DNS security solutions. They are also award-winning trainers in the networking security platform space. So Chris, Steve, thank you so much for being here with us today. We're happy to be here. Thanks so much. So we're hearing more and more reports of websites crashing with ransomware getting a lot of attention. However, just recently a problem was reported with Akamai's Edge DNS, uh, causing outages with popular websites and online services such as Amazon, FedEx, PlayStation, Sony, etc. So ransomware wasn't the culprit this time. Chris, can you help us understand what was the cause of those outages? Yeah, so the the whole issue with uh, Akamai, at least publicly what we know, is that there was some sort of bug in their DNS service. Uh, they did, of course, correct it, and everything kind of resumed on its way. But for the most part, you have a, a lot of these big companies that they're kind of gated uh, behind these other companies, like in this case, Akamai, which Akamai is just really a, a big, at least with this service, uh, like big, you know, kind of traffic, uh, just kind of directing you to where you need to go. And when that goes down, causes a lot of problems. So there was a bug. They didn't officially say what the bug was, but they did correct it. And Steve, for those of us who aren't as familiar with Edge DNS, can you help us understand what that is and what that does? Sure, Edge DNS, uh, this is actually a, a cloud-based DNS solution uh, product um, from Akami themselves. It provides DNS availability, uh, the idea is that it improves DNS response time. Uh, it also adds resiliency to DNS to defend against things like denial of service attacks. Uh, they built it on kind of a, a global distributed system based on a protocol uh, known as Anycast. Uh, so what that gives a functionality uh, is ba basically so users are directed to the best place for fast delivery of, of content when it comes to websites. And so, you know, I thought the internet is supposed to be a decentralized network. So why was this event such a big deal? Yeah, um, really to understand that, we have to go back in time a little bit, right? Go down, go back a few decades. The internet and DNS, they were developed to connect places like colleges, universities, research centers to, to mostly, you know, share, share text and, and share words. Now we... We stream huge amounts of video, music, pictures, and other content with it. So the biggest sites and services out there, they use a few of these big content infrastructure providers like Akami to help deliver the stuff, right? And we've seen issues with this as well. Back in June, there were problems with the provider Fastly that affected some big sites as well. So... Well, let's let's take a step back. So, you know, again, we talk about the internet being decentralized, and but it still has these core services. And you know, what we're understanding is DNS is, is that core service. Can can you give us a little bit of an idea of what DNS is and, and how that works? Well, what, what's the purpose for? Yeah, so basically the, the kind of idea of DNS is that if we, you know, kind of put it in in layman's terms or just kind of the easiest way to understand it is think of kind of like your contact list. So in your phone, uh, maybe you have it written down even like an address book where you have a name, you have a phone number, you might even have some extra data on there. You might have things like an address. You might have, you know, favorite restaurant or, you know, 
times that they might be there. Maybe it's a summer house, you know, whatever. But basically, the idea is that when you make a request to go to any website, it links it to an IP address, which is how the internet and computers, they talk to each other. They use those IP addresses rather than what is called a FQDN or fully qualified domain name. So DNS links those two together. So that, that's the internet phone book. So why, you know, when we look at DNS, why are so many problems caused by DNS issues or outages? Um, you know, is there a redundancy in that? How, how can that service being down cause this much of an issue? Yeah, so Steve kind of mentioned a little bit earlier that it was part of the original internet, the original ARPANET, the, the intranet as it, are, as, it, as it were, basically just allowing you to connect one location to another. So it is a fundamental foundation part of how our networking works. So when we build our networks, when we build our enterprises, you have, even if you only have five or six servers, which could be, you know, file servers, print servers, email servers, whatever, chances are you're not going to remember each individual IP address for each machine that you have running. You give them nice names like printer, email, you know, security, whatever, and you use that to get to it. So DNS gets embedded into that and allows us to very easily go from one location to another. The problem is if that service goes down, computers and networking, they don't just randomly know, hey, if I just kind of keep guessing, I might find what I'm looking for. They need that traffic director. They need somebody to tell them where to go. And that's basically what DNS does. So if that's not there, then it doesn't know how to get there. So at that point, you get that lost connection, even though the server might be running, the services might be running, you just can't access them because you don't know how to get there. So Steve, if DNS is so important and there's so many ways to exploit it, why don't more organizations make securing DNS a priority? Well, a lot of organizations out there, they know that DNS is a key component to the network and a key component to the internet. However, they tend to treat it like utility, like running water. They expect just, you know, turn the, turn the faucet on and the water flows. But the thing with DNS is that it, it contains a bunch of unique security needs that a lot of organizations, they overlook, or in a lot of cases, they're completely unaware of. So it, it's best to go with someone who really knows what they're doing when you're looking for a provider or you're looking for someone to help with your for, with your DNS and your DNS security. Someone, like, maybe like Infoblox, for instance, for a long time, they've been experts in DDI and DNS security. They can be your guide and kind of bring that clarity to you. So you basically stay away from, from DNS problems. So Chris, Steve just brought up Infoblox. I know they're dominating in the DNS security space. What makes Infoblox stand out with their solutions around DNS security and management? Well, you know, the thing with Infoblox is, is like Steve said, they've been around a really long time. Uh, they actually, the, there's actually a couple of things. One is they were one of the first companies, if not the first company to really take a look at DNS security because their main product when they were starting out is the DDI product, DHCP, DNS, and IPAM, which basically takes all three services that you would use. Typically you use DHCP and DNS, but IPAM gives you that ability to kind of look in on everything, see where your networks are, see where your devices are, manage them, do all that fun stuff. And their main product was the DDI product. So they were already doing DHCP and DNS. And basically the last couple years, I, I would say maybe it was five years ago, there was a big announcement where Infoblox actually became a DNS provider for the public, which what that means is it's a real big deal. They go through a lot of hoops and this allows them to be known as if you look at our records, 
we are providing you with accurate records. So it just makes sense for them to also be in that security light because they would be able to know what records are good and what's bad. At Cloud Harmonics and in, in my time here, we have a very close relationship with Infoblox. In fact, we actually were some of the first beta testers, as it were, and kind of helped them work on developing what is known as the ADP or their advanced DNS protection, which was a device that you put in your network. And if you were serving any kind of public DNS, so if you were a retail shop or you had just some website you were serving to the public, the ADP was great because it would be able to counteract the types of attacks that might overload your DNS server. So it was able to not only stop those attacks, it was able to also still allow regular traffic, the known good traffic to come in and go out. So they've been in the in the security for a really long time and they have actually a really, really great product. Now we're seeing advancements into cloud. Infoblox is already there doing all kinds of cloud stuff. So they're, well, they're even advancing with it. You, you, bring, you bring an interesting point. So I heard you say appliance and then you start talking about the cloud. Um, so, you know, can, can you give me a little bit better of an understanding of what is Infoblox going to do for customers that are migrating to the cloud? How do they fit in um, from the cloud security perspective? If it's an appliance, you can't really move that to the cloud, right? So you know, give me a little bit of an idea of how uh, Infoblox is gonna help support on-site and cloud, um, private, public, hybrid, and, and how they're going to um, really get into the next phase of, or evolution of their product. I'll actually take that one, Jason. Uh, and I'll start by saying it's a really exciting time at Infoblox and an exciting time to be an Infobox partner as well. Infoblox has their next generation Blox One platform. So Blox One includes Blox One DDI to manage your DNS, your DHCP, and your IP address management. And then there's Blox One Threat Defense for security. It's really the next evolution of uh, advanced DNS protection, ADP, that uh, Chris mentioned. These are cloud-native technologies. They use microservices. They support um, on-premises container-based appliances, physical appliances, VMs, to kind of deliver the services at, at the edge and link to the uh, Infoblox cloud for your management. So it gives you scalability, gives you flexibility with the ability to be cloud managed, right? For your DNS, for your DHCP, for your IPAM and for your security services. And that's across public, private, hybrid, multi-cloud. Uh, at, at the same time, Infoblox is working hard on more services to add to the Blox One portfolio as well, right? So, so stay tuned. Once again, lots, lots of exciting stuff coming. Well, guys, I really would like to thank you for coming in today. Um, this has been awesome. I did, did learn some new stuff about Infoblox and, and about DNS security as a whole. Uh, I'd like to also thank the members of the listening audience and let you know that if you'd like, you can reach out to Head in the Clouds at cloudharmonics.com uh, with any questions or if you'd like to see any further demo or uh, get more information around Infoblox and, and what they can do for your environment. And with that, I would like to again say thank you. Have a great day. Thanks, all. Thank you.